threat of disaster is never pleasant. Welcome to the Casual Preppers Podcast. These safety measures are essential. The only place for prepping, survival, and entertainment. This will be your source of survival instructions and information. Every member of the family must be coached in the business of survival. Here are your hosts, Cam and Kobe. Hold up my note turn loading. That's all right, buddy. We got some time. I got it up here. <laughs> it's, who needs a book? You got to keep it all up here, boys. <laughs> Don't care, books. Scare your brain. Yeah, keep it in my head library. <laughs> you know? It's all filed away. It's all filed. And, yeah, nice and orderly. Seriously, it's like sitting here refreshing. That's cool. I'm in trouble. <laughs> Are you connected to the Wi-Fi? Uh, the Wi-Fi? The Wi-Fi. Yeah. And it's all right. You keep doing that. I'll tell them what we got hey. going on today. So today, we're talking about Antarctica. <laughs> All right, super random, but okay. Well, yeah, it's there's so I didn't, many. I didn't. Yeah, I had no. I had no idea there was that much conspiracy. There's around a lot that place. There's a lot of stuff going on in a place where there's not a lot of stuff going on. It's just snow. Nothing going ice. on, but everything's going no, on. Nothing going on, but everything that's at weird. the same time. So that's what we decided. We're going to talk about all the weirdness. There is a lot of weirdness. That's happening. Speaking of Antarctica, uh, look outside. Good Lord, it has been doing nothing but snowing <laughs> here. It's like it won't stop. No, I I don't remember this much snow this ever. Is, I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. About 10 years ago, we had about this much snow. I wasn't. Nine years ago, maybe. Is that when we were... We should, like we help each other shovel our driveways. Probably, probably, yeah, probably. Um, I got no internet. <laughs> you still don't have internet? Yeah, it's not working. Huh. Might have yeah. to use your phone. Thanks for coming in today. Yeah, we're not going to do a podcast, podcast today, again. but um, we're going to talk about. How about I do this then? Okay, let's yeah, start I, I, with I, I, talking about while Cam figures out his mess over there. We're going to st- talk about self reliant medical care. Yes. It, you know, it goes without saying, prepping requires forethought with regard to food, water supplies, power, and protection, all areas of significant technical preparation. And like we said, self-reliant medical care is no exception. The Prepper's Medical Handbook by noted wilderness medicine expert and survivalist William W4G, MD, for that guy. Mm-hmm, provides the basis of prevention, identification, long-term management of survivable medical conditions and tells you when to return to the grid and what to do if you cannot. The organized structure of this book allows you to quickly locate what you're looking for while the information and techniques can be easily understood and performed with minimal medical training. And guess what? I have minimal medical training. I seriously have zero. I mean, maybe I've had some, but it's pretty much zero. You know how I put a Band-Aid on? Sometimes. <laughs> Those, some of it's hard to get the stuff off sometimes. It's but, true. It's true. Uh, to purchase this or to learn more, you can go to PreppersMedicalHandbook.com or you can go to the ever-popular Amazon.com and just search for Preppers Medical Handbook, and that'll get you to the same place. So I want you to go check it out. I want you to tell old Dr. Forgey how awesome he is. And tell them, tell them that, that Casual Prepper sent you. Dr. 4G. Four, oh. <laughs> I knew the, there was something weird about that. What about, about Dr. 5G? <laughs> yeah. He works in a lab. He works in a lab somewhere in Antarctica, probably. Yeah. <clears throat> right? He probably does. So did you get your stuff no, together? No, it's not working. Okay. Um, I might have to use your phone. going to have to use my phone. Yeah, that's okay. Um, that's why you got them. That's why you got them. I mean, exactly. You carry yeah, phone I don't around. know what, what Cam's doing over there with his uh, freaking tablet, but he's got a phone. It's a backup. It's just weird internet here at this <laughs> station. Maybe it could be. It's we're blocked. in this. We're Government's in this, blocked us. The studio bunker. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard to find that. But stuff. yeah. Um, so, Antarctica, did you ever know I had that much weird Dude, stuff? Dude, I in seriously there? had. Well, uh, lately I've been seeing a lot of articles that are just like pop up like a random like those clickbaity articles like there's a ton Antarctica blah 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 you it's know cold down here yeah it's cold <laughs> they have a read lot about of, how um, cold they uh, like the Google images are really yeah. like there's so many weird ones there is and they really are like mm-hmm. if you look up um, Antarctica's like weird Google images you'll mm-hmm. find tons there's so many like glaciers that look like tipped over mm-hmm. like cruise liners yep. and stuff it's so yeah. weird uh-huh but um anyway who's the guy that's just going through all those google earth <laughs> images like all day long the, some mama YouTube. found another one <laughs> you know what i mean like what's train chops train chop. <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna send that one to the president <laughs> there's obama i see him on the ice <laughs> yeah it's like who's doing that but um yeah so anyway there's a ton of those and there's been lots of conspiracies yeah for years and years. Oh, for sure. We're going to bring them up. But yeah. 
I want to talk to you about like how weird Antarctica is just in general. Like it's like a stuff. whole different planet. It's a whole different continent. It, it really is. <laughs> For sure. Um, but seriously, like it seems like something you'd see on like Interstellar. It's like a planet they're exploring and mm-hmm. all the weird like temperatures and stuff. One minute on Antarctica is like one year. Yeah, you go the down United there, States. you'll never age. <laughs> yeah. But um, so here's some crazy facts about that continent anyway, because okay. it's just it's just weird. Yeah. Um, the coldest temperature recorded in Antarctica, Antarctica was a negative 128 degrees oh. Fahrenheit. Oh my gosh, that is freaking cold. <laughs> Did you you can't go outside, right? That was in 1983. I can't imagine you going out there to pee. Your wiener freeze right off. Oh yeah, peed freeze all the way up inside you. You'd have a wiener sickle, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yep. So you can't. You can't, can't do, do it. it. <laughs> can't pee. Um, the average winter temperature at the South Pole is negative 49 degrees Celsius, which is Pretty cold. Yeah, I don't Somewhere know. Somewhere. I don't know where. Yes. Yeah, so I, I think know. it's like, uh, so 89 was 128. So yeah. around that quarter, square it. Neg- negative 78. I don't know. <laughs> Get on my That's Texas cold instruments. Out there. Um, Antarctica is the largest desert on the planet. I didn't even really consider it a desert, but well, it is. Well, neither. Because it is. It's a snow desert. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, the size of, of around 5.5 million square miles. It's pretty big. So, you know. <laughs> Pretty big. Pretty big. Don Juan Pond. <laughs> ah, Don Juan Pond in is, Antarctica is So is that like a tw- Spanish guy or a Chinese guy? I don't know. It seems like a, maybe he's both. Both. <clears throat> yep. Don Juan Pond. <laughs> Don Juan Pond. Don Juan Pond. <laughs> you can't say my last, I don't know. <laughs> my last name is from my father. I am from Argentina. My mother from my Argentina. My name is Don Juan Pond. <laughs> yeah. In Antarctica, is nearly 20 times as salty as the ocean. It's so mm. salty that heavy objects can float in it, and because salt lowers the freezing point, it's obviously, it never freezes down there. Oh, that's kind of cool. So it's so cold. It's very salty. Yeah. <laughs> that's salty. The continent is the windiest place on Earth. Mm. Scientists have examined wind speeds of more than 200 miles per hour in some regions. I thought it was vernal. Me too, honestly. <laughs> I thought Vernal would be number one, number two, in yeah. Antarctica. Mm-hmm. Uh, if all the ice melted, the sea level would, would rise by 290 <laughs> feet. Oh, my gosh. That tells you how much water down there. Holy crap. I know. It's like, it just flood over everything. Maybe we do need to think about this global warming thing. I guess there is some risks. <laughs> yeah. So, um, there is no particular time zone on the continent. Like, it kind of mm. hits all time zones. Yeah. So, there's like, eh, screw it. What time you guys want to meet? Doesn't matter. <laughs> I know. I was like, how do you coordinate anything down what there? What time's lunch? Now? <laughs> the sun, there's no sun, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Is there no sun or is there sun all the time? I think it's kind of, I think it does the same thing as Alaska. It. Yeah. Where it's like, there's a sun somewhere and it's always light and always dark. Sun comes out but at, at the eight, same time. Sun comes out at 8, 9, 10, and 11, <laughs> 12, and 1. Yeah. And 2. It's tomorrow and it's today. I don't, it's weird. Yeah, we're in another dimension here. Gotcha. Kids go to bed. It's, it's the sun's, go to bed. <laughs> but anyway, it's mom and dad time <laughs> on Antarctica. <laughs> Always. It's mom and dad time. And never. <laughs> um, but super weird because it kind of fits into all time zones, but there's not really time zones. So most like stations use their local like country time. Okay. Country time. <laughs> Lemonade. Lemonade, <laughs> Lemonade station. <laughs> <laughs> ain't selling too good down there. Hell, ain't nobody drive by. <laughs> There's a boat. Come on. Mostly popsicles now. <laughs> Country time popsicles. <laughs> um, the other thing is a special treaty was signed by the United States and 12 other nations on December 1st, oh, yeah. 1959 for Antarctica. I think you might have something on mm-hmm. this, right? According to which the land of Antarctica should be used only for peaceful research. You don't go down there killing people. No. Okay. We don't research ammunition. So wouldn't or... this be like the best bug out location? Except besides for... the wind and the icy cold weather. <laughs> besides all that, <laughs> it'd be great. Go down there. It's peaceful yeah. down here. Uh, you have to be peaceful. Yeah. Um, did we mention it on an episode? I- I've always wanted to visit like the South Pole, like mm-hmm. just the extreme environment, just to see what it's like. But I think they have like. I think like twenty five thousand visitors a year wow. down there. Those there are, there are a couple of really cool back. like TikTok accounts of people that live on those research stations yeah. out there. Oh yeah, so that cool. one. You sh- I don't know why I felt like that was so bad. A eh? it's just so cool to to watch and to like, just you go see what they're doing. Two seconds, your eyeballs fall out. Yeah, head. watch this. I'll watch get a hundred thousand views. See it out there. It's gone. See. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't see. No but more I'll pinky. Figure- 
take some pictures, <laughs> send it on TikTok. Um, TikTok worthy. So doctors that are wintering at the Australian <clears throat> Antarctic stations, this is kind of a, like people have heard, like if you were to go and stay there, you have to have your appendix <laughs> out because it's too risky mm. to have any like health emergency down sure. there because you can't be transported out. That that doesn't apply to everyone, but the doctors that are stationed there have to have their appendix It's kind of hard out. to do it on yourself. Yeah. Um, did we talk about that Russian doctor that yeah. removed his? Mm-hmm. So that was down there. Um, oh, 19, was down there. 1961, a Russian doctor at Novolareskaya Station, I don't know, mm-hmm. removed his own appendix with no outside help possible. It's so easy. <laughs> you Americans are pussy. Look at this. I did this so easy. I cut out the appendix mm-hmm. and then done. I'm going to go outside. And then I go outside. There's the avalanche. I, you know. <laughs> Lose a couple of men here and there, but I, I am alive. But I stay alive. I stay alive very easy. So that's you, crazy. Mm. Um, but yeah, got to have that out. Got to have your teeth all worked on. Ah, Can't get that worked on down there. Of course. In the McMurdo Dry Valley, a bright crimson five-story waterfall pours out yeah. a Taylor Glacier into Lake Bonnie. It's weird. It's like a blood. It looks like Mother Earth's having a period. Yeah. It's <laughs> really that time weird. of the month again, huh? <laughs> Once I'm on the earth, it spews out. It blood. looks like it's a horror movie. It does. It's really cool looking. Yeah. So it's like all this bright white snow and then this dark red fluid coming out. Mm. Super gross. It's disgusting. But apparently there's like a high amount of iron and when it oxidizes coming um, out, then it instantly turns to like blood red. It's <laughs> super gross. It is. But um, pretty weird. Mm-hmm. That's kind of weird, right? That is super. Like, it's crazy <laughs> weird. Like It doesn't look like it's real. It doesn't. No. Yeah. Bunch of polar bears killed underneath. Yeah, I know. It's it's like what those, like, you know, tree huggers say. The earth is bleeding. Yeah. We are treating <laughs> her so bad. It's getting hot. Too hot. It's bleeding. She's bleeding all over. But um, you should look that up. That's weird. Yeah, uh, it's super weird. There's some really weird creatures mm-hmm. under the ice. They found, like, microbes, crustaceans. Those are weird. Yeah. Colossal squid, leggy what? spiders. Have you seen the like uh-uh. pictures of those? I they're seen huge that. and they're super disgusting, uh-uh. but they're like sea spiders. Well, I don't want sea spiders. Yeah. For see them? <laughs> Can you see them? I've seen arachnophobia. <laughs> but yeah, they're really freaky. Um, mm. They have leggy spiders, and it says they're size of dinner plates. That's a Giant leggy spider. Worms. <laughs> leggy spider. Ah, that's real leggy. It's got eight uh, legs. <clears throat> Can we eat it? <laughs> that's usually what okay, I'm, go- I'm dying here. I don't eat that spider. I'm gonna go. I love spider legs. <laughs> <laughs> you ever had spider uh, legs? Take the appendix and eat spider legs. Have a little lemonade on this side. <laughs> huh? um, there's giant worms with shiny golden bristles. I got a giant worm. <laughs> <laughs> a large, sharp tooth jaw. I got the giant worm you want to see. They have shiny golden say. bristles and a large, sharp tooth jaw. Oh, man. Yeah, sharp tooth. Um, you can even see uh, see-through fish. You can't see them, but they're there. <laughs> I got one right here. You like it? <laughs> but yeah, they're like uh, transparent, which is super weird. Wow. The fish have antifreeze glycoproteins what? and cannot survive in warm waters. I'm going to take this home. <laughs> hey, Dad. <laughs> Uh, they, Worse they, than a goldfish. <laughs> they also don't have any hemoglobin, a protein that makes our red blood. I don't mm. know how they live. Honestly, I bet it was just a piece of ice floating. <laughs> and they're like, that's a fish. I want to name it after myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's cool to see through fish. It's cold. <laughs> it's really cold. <laughs> <laughs> don't take it into warm water. But anyways, It'll that melt. sounds like a foreign uh, yeah. that sounds like a foreign place, right? <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a it sounds like Venus or it something. Sounds like a foreign planet. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Not a familiar planet. No. Let's talk about some of the conspiracies that are involved with Antarctica. Yeah. Because there are a few. And if you've ever been on the internet, you've probably seen the, some of these there articles. Were more, yeah, there were several more than what we mm, put down, yeah. but these were the good ones. Do you remember a few years back, we did an episode entitled Hollow Earth. I like this theory. Dude, it I is. I still think it's, like, yeah. I still think it might be there. Yeah, I'm, I'm going with that. Out. <laughs> yeah. So um, we did an entire mindless banter on Hollow Earth a few years back. Basically, so I got to kind of go over this theory to explain this conspiracy. The theory is, or the conspiracy says, the entire Earth is hollow. There's a whole other world inside, right? Possibly the first person to scientifically speculate about Hollow Earth was none other than Edmund Haley of Haley's Comet. Oh, is it? Yes. 
Um, Freaking guy. He rolled in on Amazing a comet. Amazing thing he found. Mm. And then the other thing is conspiracy. Yeah, yeah, I know. Proposed in 1692 as a way of explaining anomalous compass readings, Halley's theory was that the planet is a series of nested spherical shells spinning in different directions, all surrounded by a central core. Does that make sense? I've had some more thoughts. Yeah, I'm going to think about that same thing. <laughs> but then I went to play some video games. And didn't want to think about it no more. Haley's idea was expanded upon over the next few centuries, tossing out the messy view of multiple spheres, because obviously that just seems crazy, for the vision of the entire interior of the Earth as just one impossibly large cavern. It's just gigantic inside there. Good. Yeah. Generally, this new view of hollow Earth is accompanied by the theory of a small sun that hangs in the very center. Cool. So, so it's like core of the earth is just actually another little sun down there that keeps things all, to, you know, toasty and warm <laughs> and grows all the fancy stuff they got down in there. Um, but this this hangs in the very center. It creates a lush, livable environment on the flip side of the earth's surface. So in 1818, John Cleves Symes Jr. published his circular number one, declaring to the world that the earth is hollow. Send that out on a presses. Person number two. Yep. <clears throat> so we got two people that are corroborating this at this point. His initial vision of the Earth's interior was like a simplified version of Halley's multi-layered model, with the exception that Symes' version included huge holes at the north and south poles, which allowed access to the, the hidden world inside. Close the top hole. It's blowing in here. <laughs> yeah. It blows right through. You're getting a draft <laughs> all the way through the whole Earth. All right? Shut the top. Yeah. Um, he, too, believed that the interior of the Earth not only could but did support life, saying circular number one that the inside of the Earth would be stocked. So it's kind of journey to the center of the Earth, a little but bit. Mm -hmm. there's better holes to get in. Yeah. <laughs> he said that the inside of the Earth would be stocked with thrifty vegetables and animals, mm -hmm. if not men. <laughs> oh, good. Right? So I don't know what a thrifty vegetable is, <laughs> yeah. but they got some in there, apparently. It's a one bizarre offshoot of the... Just grow so easily? Is that why they're I guess, thrifty? yeah. One bizarre offshoot of the traditional hollow earth theory put forth by natural healer and eventual cult leader Cyrus Teed. Um, <laughs> my name's Cyrus Teed. I'm a natural healer and cult leader. <laughs> Take one of these vegetables and fruits. They're cheap. They are thrifty. <laughs> Have a bite. Um, he's he even <laughs> Have a bite. Taste it. <laughs> <laughs> Smell it and taste it. You can have a lick. <laughs> I'm Cyrus Teed. <laughs> Come into my warm hall. I got a hall with a sun and vegetables. <laughs> you gotta go through the cold, but you love it inside. <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna have a good time. So his idea, uh, he devised a cellular cosmology that placed the entire universe inside a shell. What? The okay. whole damn thing is inside. <laughs> okay. That's what we're at. So according to Teed's thinking, humans were actually living on the inside of the hollow earth. So we're oh, we already in the hollow there. earth, looking okay. up at the universe, which itself is just an illusion created by a strange solar mechanism. So, <laughs> Can't explain that one. <laughs> yeah, it's just a strange mechanism. Um, <laughs> I got all just theories on yeah. all that's like... <laughs> Very detailed, but that, that that part I don't really understand. It's look, look, look! The stars are just molecules reflections. and light source. Makes so it. he's saying that the stars were just reflections of the mechanism's light. Okay, yeah, okay. makes sense. Um, so according to this conspiracy theory, altogether the entire Earth is hollow, and the only way to get inside is by the fourteen hundred mile wide holes in Antarctica and the Arctic. Big old rope. Yeah, uh, get down in. you just jump. <laughs> it's one and of it's those. Like, yeah, like exactly. When you hit the middle, you just balance out. Yeah. Also, apparently, a lost diary of Admiral Richard E. Byrd was found that details his encounter with the underground race whilst trying to build a U.S. research base at the South Pole. Okay. So Is this the one that he'd seen him. He saw him like crawling so. out of the yeah. hole. According to his lost diary, he visited the Pentagon to share the news of his new race he had and he had met, but was ordered to keep quiet. Shut up about that. We don't want to talk, nobody talking about the inner earth people. All right? Segregation was started yeah. way back before. Get out of here, Mr. Bird. I don't want to hear about it. You're so from anyways, the inside, aren't you? We don't you, want your kind here. You're one of those hollow earthers. Pay for this fruit here. We don't want your cheap fruit. You know Cyrus Teed? <laughs> you friends with that cult leader? I'll pay you 100000 to bring his head. <laughs> I've been looking for Cyrus for years. <laughs> CIA wants him. <laughs> Anyways, that's the that's the kind of the the hole leads into the earth. Man, to the hollow I like earth. that one. Um, 
I'd actually heard it in Brazil, of all places. Did you? That was the first time I ever heard it. I'm like, what are you talking about, weirdo? <laughs> we don't believe that in the United States. Let me tell you about something else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're like, that's weird. That's super strange. Have you heard about this? Let me tell you about book. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> oh, never mind. They don't want to hear Whatever. It. They're all, you know. <laughs> no. You don't want to hear about a hole? We don't want to hear about your lore. <laughs> um... <laughs> Secret Nazi base. Oh, That's yes. another big one. And that's been around a long time. Dude, any conspiracy that involves the Nazis is super interesting. Yeah. Super, I know. <laughs> yeah. Super interesting. So there's a Nazi base with advanced unconventional weapons there. Okay. Where allegedly Adolf Hitler escaped to. Oh. Uh, New S- Swabia was explored by Nazis. <laughs> Swabia. <laughs> <laughs> We're calling New Swabia. <laughs> well, <laughs> looks like we got a Swabia. Um, was explored by Nazis in early 1939 and possibly led to discoveries. Of course it did. Some kind of discoveries. Mm-hmm. Two submarines, U-977 and U-530, and these are um, documented in history that they, uh, <laughs> these are real. <laughs> yeah. They were full of Nazis and stopped in Argentina after the war. Some people claim mm-hmm. that they were on their way to Antarctica. Nazis mm-hmm. allegedly have roots in occultism, mm-hmm. Thule society, and do worship black sun, Saturn, Operation High Jump may be related. Tool, Did you talk about Tool Operation? Society? Ain't that um, don't or they tool, make? Yeah, sorry. don't they make uh, roof racks? That is old school. They make a bunch of roof racks, don't they? <laughs> yeah, that's what they kind of led to developing. <laughs> it went from the society to let's just yeah. make some. Racks. Let's just make roof, roof racks. I'm done with this occultism. <laughs> This is easier, and we make money. Gosh, we're making some good money on these roof racks. <laughs> Way less threatening for our children. People love to ski, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I like to put them up there. It's a good idea. So, so these were these were submarines that were just full of Nazis, and they yeah. stopped in Argentina. And they're documented, like the, the uh, there's records of them actually stopping in Argentina, and they're like, "Where are they going?" Can you imagine, like, being in Argentina, seeing a submarine just pull up on the coast? They're probably like, whole "What bunch is of, that?" Whole bunch of damn Nazis, aliens, jump out. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like what? Okay, we got a soccer game going. <laughs> <laughs> World Cup time already. <laughs> What's going on? What's happening? Um, so while there, the Nazis yeah. supposedly discovered several underground caves and rivers, mm-hmm. and later converted the largest cave into a secret city where they lived with the Illuminati. Apparently, come on in. Okay. <laughs> we're the best race, and we're gonna join the. We got a partners for all you yeah. Illuminatis. <laughs> Some conspiracy theorists speculate that Hitler fled to the secret base, like I was saying, mm-hmm. um, and believers claim that the Nazis somehow managed to lay their hands on alien technology yeah. as well at the secret base. Yeah. They exploited this to build the weapons they tested at the smaller caves. <laughs> Hell, the smaller caves. We got weapons testing caves over here. <laughs> yeah. Don't do it in our Go big down cave. tunnel, uh, C1, take it left, you're going to hit yeah. that small tunnel. Got You'll some- start smelling the sulfur. <laughs> Yeah. You'll know when you'll you're see there. the plasma beam. <laughs> <laughs> you hear the wow, wow, wow. <laughs> suck me right in. Just be careful. <laughs> Tractor beam suck you right in. <laughs> um, I'll Hitler. <laughs> I'll Hitler. <laughs> yeah, we, they um, all got horrible German accents. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Where the just yeah. Mm. Anyway, conspiracy theorists have long referred country to- Germans. That's what they are. <laughs> yeah, we're in disguise. We talk like this. <laughs> yeah. Um, long referred to a quote from Admiral Donitz. Donuts. <laughs> yep. Donitz. Donitz. <laughs> Donitz and Blitzer, and where he mentions Glaze and- Donitz. <laughs> <laughs> All right, men. <laughs> Y'all ain't, uh, he's from New yeah, Jersey. I know. I was like, what? <laughs> All right, men. All right, men. All right, men. Right, We're going to eat some donuts. Um, Admiral Donuts is here. <laughs> Breakfast for everyone. <laughs> you want a glazed donut or maple donut? <laughs> um, he mentions Invulnerable Fortress, a paradise-like oasis in the middle of eternal ice. Oh, hell yeah. However, as pointed, this is likely referring to the Arctic, not the Antarctic. Oh. Or Antarctica. Okay. None whatever. of it makes any sense. They're all the same to me. Yeah, exactly. One's on the same north, here. one's on the <laughs> I south. I know, right? I know. So, yeah. Wrong place. We're up top. Not in Wrong place, right time. Some believe that this theory makes more sense when you consider the fact that the United States sent a large fleet to Antarctica between mm-hmm. 40, 1946 and 1947. Yeah. And when three nuclear bombs were set off later in 1958. Mm-hmm. It we're actually was a that. small war that may have just been eliminating the Nazis. You're stealing there. my thunder. I'm going to talk about that later. Yeah, am I? Okay. That's okay, though. Sorry about that. That's Sorry good. About it. It's all good. 
But now that many documents have been declassified, we know that these were training mm-hmm. exercises in case there was a war with the Soviet Union. So, mm-hmm. And I guess Co, we'll have a little more now. Yeah, I mean, there's not much more. You pretty yeah. much gave it all away. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just wrap this up. Thanks a lot. Thanks for listening, guys. Cam yeah, said it sorry all. Sorry about that. If you're going to get stuck at, in Antarctica, though, like you're going to want some like nice long-term yeah. food storage because you can't be growing your corn. There's not a lot of donuts. You're not going to get lemonade. If you don't find that hole... With you're, the thrifty, you're done. Fruits and vegetables, yeah, vegetables. You're gonna be drinking iron red water. That's it. <laughs> yeah. And leggy spiders. Oh, mmm, mm, fried leggy spiders. That makes me miss Antarctica. Yeah, lasagna and leggies, mm, <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> um, but nutrient survival—that's the way to go because it's made with real ingredients. It's made in America, not Antarctica, to keep America's healthy, strong, and alert, perfect for today, ready for anything ahead. From hearty, delicious entrees and nutrient dense snacks to immunity-boosting drinks and strength-building shakes, each with 40 essential nutrients. That's the key, Cameron. Available in handy singles, daily-use pantry packs, durable cans, and 3- to 90-day survival kits, keeping your world safe and your body in peak condition. This isn't your cheap, empty-calorie, bland food storage. This stuff has nutritional value, and it tastes delicious, okay? Check out their new NREs, Nutrition Ready to Eat. Those things are so cool you gotta get one all right head over to nutrient survival.com use our code casual preppers for 10 percent off your order you're gonna get some great food you're gonna support one of our sponsors and you're gonna support casual preppers yeah all right go man get if it. the terra nova expedition yep. exploring they would have had this just pop some of nutrient survival they would have got down to the they done it all they would have claimed it like six weeks earlier exactly so great stuff so here's a really interesting conspiracy This one theory. I hadn't heard of. This is, uh, this, is this is kind of a recent one, actually. In 2016. I figured it excited you. I did. Because you've been wanting to talk about pyramids. i to talk about forever. pyramids. If i got to talk about ice pyramids, that's what I'll do. <laughs> All right. In 2016, the internet went wild after three pyramids were discovered in Antarctica. Were they really discovered? I don't know. We're going to talk about that. The pyramids measured over 4,000 feet tall. That's wow. pretty. If you don't know, that's tall. Jeez, that's ten times the height of the pyramid in Giza. I was gonna say <laughs> ten times that height. It was strange, as there's no record that any ancient civilization existed in Antarctica. Obviously, mm. right? So conspiracy theorists they jumped on board, claiming that the pyramids were built by some undiscovered ancient civilization that had lived in Antarctica 100 million years ago. They just start throwing out random stuff. <laughs> nah, that was built 100 million years ago by a tribe that lived in Antarctica. I know. I tasted a few rocks, carbon dated them. Yeah. Guarantee you. I'm pretty sure I'm that right. civilization was there. And so, you know, the, and people go, well, what about all the snow? How are yeah. you going to live there? They yeah. say, wait. At that time, the equator was Antarctica. Oh. So that's what they're saying. The axis was tilted that in makes a different sense. That direction. Makes sense. So awesome. the living conditions were more tolerable. A great place to build a pyramid. I feel Not like, like it is Earth now. is off its axis right now. My, uh, something is. Crazy something winter is. this I year. I know. However, they added that the government is hiding information. Always. And, and has even blocked pictures of the pyramids on Google Earth. Yep. I got a little more on that, too. Uh-huh. Scientists countered that the supposed pyramids are neither are either horn or noon attack mountains. Cam. Oh, okay. Okay. A horn is uh, formed after erosion washes down the sides of a mountain, making it appear like a pyramid. Nunataxi, nunataxi, I'm saying that right, are a category of mountain that are so tall that they rise above the permafrost huh. covering Antarctica. Taught you something. Yeah, there you go. According to scientists, the supposed pyramids could not have been built by an ancient civilization because Antarctica was actually at the South Pole 100 million years ago. Whatever that means, I don't get how that works, but um, the ancient civilization part could not be true either because the earliest human species appeared two million years ago. Although that I thought has, Antarctica was the South Pole. Um, I don't know. That's what it was saying. It, this, yeah, so it was actually the South Pole. Yeah, so the same thing. It's, it is where it is. Oh, oh, it's always been. Okay. Yes, that's what, sorry. I, I may have said that in a weird way. But yes, you're right. No, I just didn't understand it. Okay. I understood it a weird way. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So they're saying, obviously, the earliest human species appeared 2 million years ago, so it couldn't have been 100 million years ago. Because it was still there. Yeah. As it is. But 
there are some people like Graham Hancock that say actually uh, oh, Graham? humans were here earlier yeah. than this. Okay, so there's there is debate there. Uh, yeah. by some people. It's yeah, you know, that's crazy. As a result, the so-called pyramids could o- have only been built by dinosaurs, mm. right? Because that was the only species yeah. on the planet at that time. However, there is no evidence that dinosaurs built pyramids, Cameron. <laughs> that is not one I've heard. <laughs> so, anyways, that's the pyramids on Antarctica. little baby hands. They can't. Yeah. They can do that. Uh, they can get tall though. That's true. They got that big long three necks. horns. Push it up on there. Yeah, that's triceratops. 4, 000- Don't call them three horns. That's triceratops. <laughs> Um, 4,000 feet, huh? Wow, yeah. that's crazy. Yep. It makes sense, though. That's the best, like, snow uh, yeah. roof ever. It is, because it just right slides off. right off, you know? Oh, geniuses. And then your Nazis can live inside the pyramid. There is some kind of, there is, like, later I'll talk about, there is kind of a tie there to, like, the ancient civilization they think may have mm-hmm. went to Egypt and all that, which yep. is kind of cool. Yep, it's way cool. So, um, they also believe... Here's your ancient civilization mm-hmm. that Atlantis may have or may de- may exist underneath the polar yeah. ice cap. So Atlantis is so that's why you can't find it. I kind of want to do an entire episode. I, on you Atlantis. could. I think that would be a good one. Yeah. Because um, you know what better place for a secret <clears throat> civilization underwater that ended up underwater? Mm-hmm. Um, you can't find it because it's underneath Antarctica. A thousand feet of what is the ice? It's like five hundred something feet. I don't anyway, know. it's a lot. You ain't going to do ice fishing down there. No, no. Um, So some conspiracy theorists claim that the fabled Atlantis is under Antarctica. Rumors Mm -hmm. of a hidden city have been floating around for years. And conspiracy theorists and even some scientists claim that the freezing continent is actually the home of the legendary lost city. So it's just kind of all buried. You can't see it. It's in ice. Um, It it is ice down there. It's it's like my driveway. (laughs) Yeah. It's there. (laughs) Yep. They've been driving over it and never scraping it, mm-hmm. and so it just keeps building up. My neighbors are shaking their heads. <laughs> yeah, uh, idiot. He's got a civilization getting I'm, buried right now. I was out at three a.m. clearing off my driveway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening to this clearing it off right now. <laughs> this guy. The idea kicked off in the fifties after Professor Charles Hapgood. Hello, I'm Professor Charles Hapgood. <laughs> How do you do? Yes. Uh, historian. <laughs> Charles Hapgood. Charles Hapgood. Historian. How you doing? Have a whiskey. He suggested. <laughs> Have a lemonade. <laughs> Spike with whiskey. <laughs> Poor bear fur inside. It's delicious. <laughs> Iron water, blood and water. <laughs> <laughs> Have a sip of that hot blood. You ain't gonna get cold. Yeah, Mother Earth buried in one of those. I love the little. Charles Hapgood, destroying <laughs> bloody water drinker. <laughs> Have a drink. Let's talk about it. Lanes. Mother, Mother Earth tap. <laughs> yeah. mm. Anyway. He suggested that Antarctica was home to some undiscovered ancient civilization, like we already talked about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hapgood's belief. Hapgood. Hapgood belief. Belief hinged on the theory that Antarctica was not covered in ice. 11,000. It was a piece of ice in a whole damn race. <laughs> Again, to get a civilization. <laughs> Charles Hapgood says it, and it's true. <laughs> My grandfather. <laughs> Grandpappy <laughs> Hapgood was there. He chopped through the ice 156,000 years ago. Hap good name has been <laughs> on that continent. <laughs> I believe should be the Hap good company. <laughs> Frozen Hap good. Mm. Um, conspiracy theorists claim that Hap good was right. <laughs> Have a pep. <laughs> However, they added that <laughs> the civilization was actually Atlantis. Ow. You're not right, Hapgood. Hapgood, you were close, but no cigar. <laughs> <laughs> well, screw you all. Hapgood's going to have another drink anyway. <laughs> I wonder. <how> it sounds. <laughs> Which remains covered in ice today. 1995, <laughs> Graham Hancock. <laughs> yes, yeah, I talked yeah, about yeah, Graham Hancock. Yeah. Asserted in his study, Fingerprints of the Gods. Mm-hmm. That people of Atlantis had migrated from Antarctica to found the Aztec mine and Egyptian empires. Yep. Makes sense. Look at the pyramids there. Yeah, they're all they're all pyramids. They're shit. all pointy. Mm. But th- none of them are gonna meet the four thousand foot. I call them Earth's nipples. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to say. Desert nipples. <laughs> so they're like, screw this cold. Yeah. Let's go to the nice places. 
Yeah, it makes sense. Either down in the hole, we're going to go up in the middle. <laughs> yeah. I don't sense. trust that hole. <laughs> blood coming out of that one. <laughs> I ain't going in that one. Let me think, which one should I go in? <laughs> the one with the blood spewing? I don't, I don't know what to do. Oh, uh, that's Charles Hatwood. <laughs> <laughs> Charles was drinking it. You want this water. One thing I can't stand about in her because all the damn blood water holes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shouldn't it be like... <laughs> <laughs> just a bunch of poor bears just licking it. <laughs> There's like 50 poor bears. Covered you think it's just blood. In, covered in blood water. Um, the theory called crustal displacement mm. alleges that the movements in the Earth's crust meant that the large parts of Antarctica were ice-free 12,000 years ago. Mm. Debunked by what you just said. Yeah, that's right. Allegedly, a society could have existed prehistory coming to an end with the last ice age which froze over the continent that makes sense yeah and this could have been atlantis a mythical city we're not going to go into details okay we we'll say that for another half good stuff. we really do need to do a full episode on it is a good one yeah. um the fascinating discovery comes just weeks after scientists revealed the the earth could be heading for another mini ice age what? caused by the sun going blank i don't know i haven't sun, heard that one sun's gone blank <laughs> I like that thing. Charles Hapgood. Is he gonna the sun's gone blank. <laughs> My grandfather saw the sun go blank one year. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta take my back pill. <laughs> Give me that lemonade. I gotta go take a nap. <laughs> Charles Hapgood signing off. Charles Hapgood going to bed. <laughs> Journal entry, 1st of January, 1666. Charles Hapgood. Yeah. Too tired to ride tonight. The wind's still blowing. <laughs> I can smell that broad river. Negative one hundred and thirty six <laughs> degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> Documented the coldest time on earth and I'm here. Charles Hapgood. Took out my own appendix this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Wisdom teeth removed yesterday. <laughs> Did them both at the same time. <laughs> Two birds, one stone, half good <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Tell Mrs. Hapgood I miss her and I love her. <laughs> Tell little Bobby Hapgood and I'll see him <laughs> when the sun goes blank. <laughs> <laughs> the Hapgood name shall live on. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know if you're getting anything out of this. <laughs> Archaeologist Jonathan Gray claimed mm. that the U.S. government is trying to block the video <laughs> from being seen because it reveals that there's a massive archaeological dig underway two miles beneath the ice. I don't know why he worries about it. It's underneath the ice. <laughs> yeah, what's the what's it going to do if you can yeah. see? I don't there's know. a little hole in the truck right there. You know? <laughs> Look at that Toyota. <laughs> well, you tell me what's a Toyota doing in Antarctica. <laughs> there's a hole under it. And he goes yeah. in. Oh, man. Four-wheel drive. It's too fuzzy. You can't see. <laughs> can't see but that's nothing. not the wildest claim. This, mm. the, with several online websites claiming that there is uh, a city in Antarctica that Hitler knew mm -hmm. about making the secret Nazi base. And, and so it's really not Atlantis. Yeah. A lot of theorists just go back to that original thought. Just because we don't know where it's at. Base. Yeah. We don't know where it's at, right? Yeah. People don't like the unknown. <laughs> they like it, but they don't like <laughs> right, it. Right, right. Right. So um, the next Hapgood. theory for Antarctica revolves around... <laughs> <laughs> you prick. He's putting stuff in my oh, notes. Yeah, yeah. He's putting stuff in my notes. <laughs> I ain't reading that. Do it. Uh-uh. The, about these icebergs that people have spotted there. Okay? <laughs> these icebergs, they're so huge that they can be seen from space, but their perfect shape has raised suspicion. These are weird looking. They're goofy. I saw a video of um, NASA explaining, like, flying over them. Of course like, NASA perfect, explained it. This is perfect. <laughs> Charles Hapgood. <laughs> <laughs> Scientist Charles Hapgood. Um, yeah, the main problem is that the perfect shapes don't, they just don't occur uh, like that in nature. No. Usually, right? You just, I ain't seen that. You ever seen a square I ain't lake? I seen that. Like a I've perfectly never seen square it. lake? Like, yeah, no. Sewer ponds, maybe, yeah. but not a square lake. <laughs> the sheer size of them has also caused conspiracy theories. But hey, blood's coming out of the freaking snow, so. I have seen that before. Rectangle. The sheer size of them has also caused conspiracy theorists to wonder if they have been built by aliens or even one of the major world's governments. Yeah. Right? So the, basically, they're these huge rectangular icebergs. They, they're almost like like somebody cut them, right? They're not, they don't look like penises, Cameron. <laughs> no, I thought so. <laughs> what were you going to say? I was like, maybe you're... <laughs> 
<laughs> what? Just being gross. Oh, okay. Maybe they're developing large maxi pads. Oh, I to get see. it down to that. You bloody... gotta gotta do some. <laughs> we can't get it down. It's too frozen. <laughs> yeah, let well, it flow. Just let it go. It's a it's a it's a high flow. My day. wife is going to get mad at me. She's already mad. Um, scientists call them tubular icebergs. They do, or big. tabular, not tubular. <laughs> Shit. Tubular, bro. So, that's hang loose, bra. <laughs> Those are tubular. That's too. <laughs> so stupid. Tabular. Tubular. Tabular. Yeah. Okay. Okay. They are naturally formed when part of an iceberg breaks off from a larger one. I don't know how that explains it. Look, a big iceberg breaks off perfect square, perfect rectangle. <laughs> it's all weird. <laughs> It's science. <laughs> they are like it makes no sense. There's some, you know, like it's like looking in the clouds and trying to see shapes. Yeah. If you do Google Earth, you're like, I see it all. I know everything's there's there. Boats, there's rectangles, <laughs> bloody stuff. It's weird. <laughs> exactly. Some so, okay. Some people also suggest that it could be a secret government facility. So that's why they look kind of makes sense. Perfect. You know, so it's like just covered the roof in the snow. Roof. They haven't covered the roof in snow. They haven't shoveled the roof off yet. <laughs> that's true. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. But there are there are some really cool mm-hmm. shapes in the are, yeah. icebergs. Apparently, special bases. <laughs> special um, bases. But guess what? What? Antarctica doesn't even exist. That's what I heard. This is a good one. So, the South Pole mm-hmm. is just a wall for a flat Earth. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, there actually is no continent there. It's just the edge that surrounds flat Earth. Yeah. So, it's just a big ice wall. So, mm-hmm. people get down there and they're like, eh. <laughs> Can't get up there. It's like uh, this is like Game of Thrones as like the big wall, yeah, the ice or whatever. Speaking of Forbes, prominent flat earther Robbie Davidson. When we look at the Antar- when we look at our Antarctica, if you take a globe and you squish it down, the Antarctic would go all the way around the Earth. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like an ice shore, and it's very, very large. I squished a globe last week. <laughs> Made a Plato yeah. smashed it. I just got a regular globe from Walmart and just squished it. <laughs> Scientific. <laughs> Science. Look what it does. <laughs> Shows you. Earth is flat, idiots. <laughs> Do I need to say any more? Yeah. The flat earthers are so convinced by the ice wall that they have planned their own trip to Antarctica to prove it. Oh, I hell hope yeah. it is documented. I'm going. I got a snowmobile rented and everything. <laughs> Gonna document New beanies and gloves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have to believe that the earth is really flat, so the South Pole merely surrounds the earth with the north at the center, so that's actually the middle. Oh, and so and the south is on the outside. Middle, and then you got the, the so like other the crust continents. of the pizza. <laughs> exactly. It's right. pan. Yeah. Pan pizza. Deep dish. Deep <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's all it is. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, flat earthers say that Antarctica is actually, like, like I was saying, it's a 200-foot wall that encircles. Um, How'd they get that number? Flat earthers say Captain Cook. Okay. Is one of the few people to have ever seen the real Antarctica. Did you say voice. Captain Hook? <laughs> Captain. No, no. No, Captain Cook. I read that book. <laughs> yeah. Peter Pan. Yeah. Second star to the left, straight on till morning. Isn't yeah. That what he says? <laughs> yeah. Captain or Cook. to the right. I don't know. Wrote, the ice walls which contain the waters are real. Many have seen them, but few have ever gone past them. Of course. When will the ruling powers of this realm allow us to leave our confined space? Anybody who uses realm... In their writings or, or speaking, <laughs> they got different. problems. Yeah, are we destined to go beyond, or are we physically not able to? Mm. In the comments, another Instagrammer said, "Don't think we'll ever be allowed. Mm. That would blow their globe Earth theory, wouldn't it?" And the House of Cards would trouble. Mm. Charles have good. Charles have good. <laughs> but the concept of an ice wall around Earth is both fiction and scientifically impossible. Experts say, "Yeah, Antarctica is a continent in the southern hemisphere." Satellite data shows that it does not extend around mm-hmm. the earth. It's there. Mm-hmm. There's a big blob, snow, there's blood coming out of it. <laughs> yeah. In addition, Bloody an ice blob would not be sustainable, Antarctic scientists say. Yeah. Obviously. That's BS. <laughs> yeah. That won't be an honor. <laughs> We're from the 30s. <laughs> the time's <laughs> different Read down all about it. The earth is a pizza <laughs> with an <laughs> Antarctic crust. <laughs> Stuffed crust. There's no time down here. We don't age. What time is it? It doesn't matter. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> Charles Hapgood. <laughs> so, Charles Hapgood stopped by yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
how about a lot of conspiracy th- theories around this continent involve aliens and UFOs? We've already talked about some of that, right, Cameron? One of the most widely reported, it was a theory raised by a bunch of alien hunters recently. Um, when you look at Google Earth, the Google Earth just causes issues in Antarctica. <laughs> just shut it down. You gotta believe it. Like, I don't want so for funny. the government. <laughs> Google Earth is just like, they're not crisp. I know. Why are these pictures? I, I, they blocking stuff. Yeah. They it, blocking. Who cares? <laughs> They're blocking. They're blocking. <laughs> They're blocking. When stuff. you look at Google Earth, they spotted a suspicious trail running from the peak of a mountain down. They claim that this looks like a path of a craft that hit the mountain peak and then crash landed into the ice. It does kind of look like it that. It does like, kind of oh. look like it. As no human crafts fly over this continent, they say the only rational explanation is that it was an alien craft that crashed hmm. in the snow. Um, but a physical geography. Isn't there no fly zones down there? So they say. No, there's not. There's not. There's not. I, could, I couldn't find any. We're going to talk about that later. Okay, good. <clears throat> I couldn't actually find that anywhere. I'd heard that it was like, no fly I heard, zone. I heard a lot of things like you that, gotta too. go around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just go around, you idiot. Just follow the ice wall. Yeah. Take you right back. 200 foot in the air. You don't want to drive a plane over that. <laughs> good hell. We got 4,000 feet pyramids. You got to get over the... Yeah, you got to get over the pyramid, <laughs> watch out for the wall. Yeah, there's just a draft that goes over that it's pyramid. It's crazy down there. You don't want to bring that system this way. <laughs> um, a physical geography lecturer from Keele University who explained um, that it was simply a block of ice from an avalanche that had skidded further across the ice than the rest that. of some of the debris. Easy. Easy yeah. avalanche. Some geologists insist that the trail's just an avalanche. Mm-hmm. These geologists all came from Russia. That's exactly right. <laughs> no. I say wow. probably Russian geologists. Uh, <clears throat> it's just, it's no, no, uh, it's just avalanche. It looks like a craft, but it's actually just an uh, avalanche. I can understand how there is some confusion on this part, but it's just avalanche. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> no in the deal. press conference. Yeah. Don't look at the blood snow water. Okay. <laughs> Don't look. Claim the Russia. <laughs> <laughs> there is a flag from Russia that's been there since the early 30s. Okay. It's <laughs> yeah. mm, yes, ours. That's right. Uh, another one of the most popular. He is right. <laughs> he's, he's definitely right here. <laughs> Listen to the man. <laughs> um, well, you'll one. die by avalanche. <laughs> you don't believe me? You I'll, die by I'll avalanche. You, avalanche. you die by avalanche. I'll show you avalanche up close and personal, okay? <laughs> you want the avalanche right now? <laughs> want to avalanche, huh? <laughs> Perhaps we go outside in the avalanche? <laughs> <laughs> I don't avalanche indoors. I avalanche outside always. <laughs> Meet me today at noon. We avalanche. I don't even have an appendix, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this um, another one of the most popular is that Antarctica is home to a few secret UFO bases where of course. alien technology is found. Yes, the basis for this theory is the two entrance craters found on Antarctica's surface that run to deep underground. Yeah, yeah many conspiracy theorists think that these tunnels eventually lead to secret There's like UFO pictures bases. Pictures of those on yeah. Google Earth, huh? Mm-hmm. Where the world's government is developing and testing alien technology. Great place to Where do it. Where can we do this? Only in Antarctica. Yeah. Nobody if it goes crashes. There. Mm-hmm. You're just going to pick it up out in the cold or we it's going to blow over. We take a sled out there, pull it back into the hole, <laughs> yeah. let it roll down in there, play with it. Turn off the pictures and the satellite for a minute. Go we'll get that. Yeah, crash. Call Google. <laughs> Don't want to blur everything. <laughs> yeah. Tell them, to, uh, tell them it's Operation Bigfoot with the Google thing. <laughs> Google pictures. Okay? Yeah. Um, Scott Waring, a UFO conspiracy theorist, said that the craters were formed by a UFO buried in the permafrost. He claimed that he spotted the UFO in the original image he viewed on Google Earth. However, he explained that the UFO is no longer visible because Google edited the original image. Why? Why? Yeah. I didn't even think to take a screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> they changed it. Yeah. You know? This is something super important in history. Yeah. Now check it tomorrow. I gotta go eat. I'll look at it later. <laughs> Web browser time up, honey. Yeah. We still going to Olive Garden at seven? <laughs> I got a whole conspiracy thing going on here. I want to talk about a conspiracy at Olive Garden. Come on, baby. Yeah. We're getting unlimited breadsticks tonight because <laughs> I just found a discovery. <laughs> breadsticks on me everybody <laughs> salad too salad too okay um you know if you're gonna be going into this like they have a permafrost do you know what that means cam you want the best of the best gear right yeah because you you gotta stay warm out mm-hmm. there right if you want to go to off the grid surplus they got a whole winter gear section on their site can you believe it i believe it i believe it uh they have um hoodies 
They have jackets. They have flannels. I want one of their jackets. Yeah, I do too. I want one of your jackets off the grid. Charles Hagoo says we need jackets. <laughs> okay. <laughs> have, have good love for the winter jacket. Have good on making online re- order requests this <laughs> evening. After my nap. Mush, mush, dogs. <laughs> Pick it up tomorrow. But anyways, Off the Grid Surplus, man, they got some great stuff. Such really? great gear, so durable, and so functional for us folks that like to carry knives and who knows what the hell else we got in our pockets. That's the whole crazy thing about don't us. Don't need to know. You don't know. Yeah. But I got places to put them with these Off the Grid Surplus gear. So if you want to check them out, you want to support the podcast, you want to support one of our sponsors, go to offthegridsurplus.com. Get an extra 15% off with our code CASUALPREPPERS15. They got everything, guys. They do. They got tons who of who on the planet makes a specific pocket for your knife? Not a lot of people. I love it. I do too. So good. I'm right there with you, Cameron. You ain't going to be bumping your hand and pulling it out of your pocket on accident. It's yeah. in its own pocket. It is. I like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So another thing that was spotted on Google Earth, and actually you can look this one up. I don't okay. know where, but you can go look for it. Okay. It is a Mott and Bailey Castle remain. Like it looks like it. Have you seen that? No. So it looks like the remnant of a like a... You know, Normandy, castle. France castle. Oh, really? It's pretty cool. I'm going to check um, that out right Yeah, now. look at it. Um, this giant fort-like structure has just revealed itself in the in deepest Antarctica, sparking claims that ancient civilization once roamed the polar region. What appears to be the remains of an oval-shaped building is 400 foot across and appears to have all the hallmark uh, signs of being a sizable man-made construction, similar to a medieval uh, Mott and Bailey Castle. Oh, okay, so yeah, I, I, I searched Mott and Bailey and that didn't come up. But now Mott and Bailey is a good group. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, it's it's crazy. I Look, see. you see it. It has yeah. the two different oval kind of. Yep. It does look like a castle. Mm-hmm. Appropriate size range and has two sort of circles through the whole thing appears to be more or less completely flat rather than having any significantly raised uh, earthworks Mm -hmm. in which part define a Mott and Bailey castle. The mounds of such castles in towns and cities in the countryside in Europe are particularly enduring across the centuries, even when all of the evidence is gone. So you wonder what that, what is that? I don't know. They say, um, uh, so it w- it would obviously reshape everything if that's what right. that was. But it's funny. It's there. It's like, why don't you go down and explore it? And it's not like covered up or anything. What else you guys got to do? Yeah, seriously. You snowmobile out in the middle of nowhere. Go find something. Go look at it. They did stuff. a national treasure. Yeah. So satellite imagery clearly shows the structure which closely resembles the ruins of the once giant's giant building. It is so symmetrical it has raised questions as to whether nature alone could have even designed it. Mm-hmm. It doesn't look like it. No. Like it's it, the way that it's kind of like really... It does look like architecture. It's really strange. Speaking of National Treasure, do you know that part was actually filmed by Strawberry? Was it really? You know the part where they're in that snow cat? I do know what you're talking about. That was at Strawberry. That was at Strawberry. Why there? I don't know. That's where they wanted to film it. How did you find that? Internet. Google Earth. That's great. No, it was was internet somewhere. I saw that. Yeah, interesting, huh? Well, anyway, okay. learning something Scientists new. initially thought the discovery could be uh, Sastrugi. Yeah, Sastrugi. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. I didn't even know that. A natural phenomenon formed by years of being battered by strong freezing winds and heavy snowfall. That doesn't make any sense. None. No. None. No, 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 no. So. I don't believe it. Yeah. But Sastrugi's. That sounds Sast- like something. Like, that sounds like a Russian dish, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> We're eating Sastrugi's tonight, boys. <laughs> Everyone, Sast- what kind of Sastrugis? Uh, yeah, the Tushonka on the side. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Always form a distinctive shape based on the direction of the wind and rarely appear as a distinct oval, such as the mystery formation yeah. in the satellite. It just nope. doesn't make any sense. I don't believe it. Ancient civilizations in Antarctica have long been rumored to have existed. Mm-hmm. People pointing to the map drawn in 1513 by Turkish Admiral Piri Reis. Mm. Ha, uh, as a clear sign of historic life. Interesting. So there's a lot of different things that indicate that there was like civilizations down there. Right. Whether it be the earth was weirdly tipped on its side yep. or something. Yeah. So. That's a good that one. That one's interesting. <clears throat> so Cam already kind of stole my thunder a little bit on this one, talking about flat earth, you know. Sowie. The, it's all right. The flat earthers, <laughs> they think that the earth is a flat circle, right? The center is the North Pole, the Arctic Ocean, Antarctica. It's not a continent, but instead it's an ice perimeter surrounding the flat earth, right? So the problem is that there are actually people- How cool would it be to go stand up against that wall like that? Uh, dang. On the other side of this is space. Just the you end. Just fall. <laughs> yeah, you just fall. 
So the problem is that there are people who have actually visited Antarctica and their information about Antarctica does not fit the flat earth narration. But to deal with this problem, they invented a conspiracy theory and assumed every person who have claimed to have been to Antarctica is part of the conspiracy. Of course. They spread the information Go down there and they're to like, deceive us. Welcome. Here's $100,000. Sign this. You are now part of the... This don't exist. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't here. No. Okay. Mm-mm. Have good. Sign Have off. good. <laughs> Number one name on top of this, Charles Hamlin. <laughs> You're welcome for meeting me. <clears throat> this is called a have good treaty. Don't tell us so. Um <laughs> You're right over there. Oh. Have a drink of this. <clears throat> have a drink. Signed in blood. <laughs> By every have good since 1625. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> mush, mush, dogs, mush, go. Mush, mush, dogs, mush. Mush, mush. Um... So uh, the existence of the Antarctic Flies Treaty Flies off on a horse. <laughs> it's a weird place. Flies off on a horse. <laughs> the existence of the Antarctic Treaty System is convenient. Flat Earthers use it to support their narration. According to Flat Earthers, the Antarctic Treaty System was created to prevent the world population from entering Antarctica. The purpose, is that really what it's for? No. Their purpose is to conceal the fact that the Earth is flat, obviously. Are you serious, Clark? No, I'm not. The real world Antarctic Treaty prohibits things like claiming land as private property. You can't just land on Antarctica and say, this is my house it's now. Mine. I live here. This is my bug out location. You can't do that. You also can't do mining operations. You can't just start mining <laughs> anywhere you want. Right? Well, there goes two of my dreams. Well, cross those two off the list. What's the third one? <laughs> Great. You can't do any nuclear-related operations. Son of a... <laughs> the whole plan is gone. <laughs> Top three, yeah. right off the bat. Operation Have Good is done. <laughs> um, also, you can't use it to dispose of waste. No, that would make more sense. <laughs> you know what I mean. You can't just fly your garbage to Antarctica and <laughs> open the hatch and let it all float down into... All my grass clippings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Been saving these since 1973. <laughs> It's just going to freeze and blow around. Yeah, just frozen. Doesn't matter. Not a big deal. What am I doing wrong? The leggy spiders love this stuff. <laughs> Get in there and they nestle in there and they yeah. love it. It's creepy, but they love it. <laughs> you ever seen a leggy spider Ooh. in grass clippings? Makes, you, yeah, makes my skin crawl. I'll throw up if I have to see it again, but I don't, you know. I got to show these judge. clippings. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Throw them over the fence? Last time I got a fighting with my neighbor. I tried to dump him over the 200-foot wall, but I couldn't get up there. <laughs> it's a high damn wall. That would be the way to do it. <laughs> no, I know. Just dump him off the side of the earth. Who cares? There's no treaties in space. Seriously, if there was a flat earth, wouldn't you just have... That would be your garbage disposal. Yeah. Why don't you all dump it here where I can tell you why? Yeah. It disappears. It RDT it off his- would just have like a direct line, like a tube to the end of the earth. <laughs> yeah. And all the plastics would be floating so out nice. in space. That's a good idea. I don't get it. Um, so yeah, so nowhere in this treaty is it stated that regular people are not allowed to enter Antarctica. It's all a bunch of baloney. Yeah. It's all a bunch of damn baloney. <laughs> all right? I believe it. Frozen uh, baloney. <laughs> mm. <laughs> hey, um, baloney sickles. So there's also conspiracy that there's mysterious regions blocked on Google Earth. Ah, and even at some point, there's been like big sections that have been um, blurred out and they have mm-hmm. big X on them. <laughs> and that... Tells you there's something going on. <laughs> of course, yeah. Conspiracy theorists. Theorists. Conspiracy theorists. Oh, so serious. Have claimed someone at Google is attempting to point out a hidden secret ben- uh, beneath the ground in Antarctica. It's like they were trying to show you where with that is. Look, this is where it is. The conspiracy theorists <laughs> have very found easy. it. easy. Look on Google Earth. Just go to www.googleearth.com. You will see in this conspiracy and true 256-bit colors. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever that. The far-fetched claim has been made by a YouTube expert. Oh, yeah. Who says a big X on the freezing continent has appeared on Google Earth. In For a sure. video posted on the YouTube channel, Conspiracy Depot, mm. viewers are shown how a mysterious marking has been placed right over it. Mm. It apparently suggests someone at the web giant is trying to point to people something mysterious. Something they saw, they're like, yeah. it's right there. Mm-hmm. The words accompanying the video state, looking through Google Earth tonight when I noticed a huge red X pointing to an area in Antarctica. Why were we- I was just looking through Google Earth. I had nothing else to do. Honey, let's go on a trip. Yeah, I'm going to look at South Pole. What is that? There's nothing on Facebook. Let's flip over to Google Earth. 
I haven't looked. You're looking at Google Earth again? No, no, um, no, 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 no. I'm looking. At I'm looking at porn. Porn. I mean, <laughs> no. Oh, damn it! She You've got, got a problem. We're gonna have um, to talk to a therapist about this, babe. <laughs> Um, he's the, the, he says it's because they're hiding the truth of climate change. It's so severe that oh. they created a virus so that we would get distracted and not pay attention. So mm. basically what you're seeing is old images cropped over a I big see. giant hole of a melting South Pole. That's what they claim. That makes sense. And so there's been attempts at Google in the, an inside job to try and mark the <clears throat> spots that we should look at. It's always an inside so you, job. If you look at Google Earth on a regular basis, every night between eight and 10, mm-hmm. look for that. Look for that X. Great idea, great idea. There's even a random straight white line that they missed and forgot to delete. I've seen that, actually. I looked at it yesterday. Really? Yeah. Because I was like, let's see. I'm going to go browse around for a couple of hours. Straight white weight. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Delete. <laughs> Honey, I didn't look for that. I don't know who Googled that. Kids are looking at weird stuff. <laughs> straight white lines. I don't know. <laughs> Remember using... Uh, wait, wait. Nah. Well, let me see. So this person says, "Oh, this is a, this is a comment from somebody." Um, remember using the computer tool application Paint Black in the '90s? Well, they can do it even more now. I'm pissed. <laughs> I wonder how much snow ice is even truly left in the world because oh now the maps are lying. The weather apps like Two RF in Sun is six to twelve degrees Fahrenheit. That's over a, a bunch of nonsense. It was. <laughs> like if your sentence. phone isn't telling you the real, real fill, I suggest getting a different app. Yeah. <laughs> Weather Live widgets and radar review only. <laughs> no, it seems the most accurate to me. This person was just like saying, "Use these apps because they're not telling you the most accurate." I don't work for Weather Live. I swear. <laughs> yeah. I know that's funny. Weird. But anyways, he's that's saying cr- that they're, they're masking all the true sure. temperatures because Earth is melting, okay? The polar ice caps are melting. There's a big hole, and they've patched it. I get it. I said that the hardest way possible. Yeah, that's all right. So, um, like Cam mentioned earlier, some say that Antarctica is a no-fly zone. And by some people, I mean conspiracy theorists. Nobody else says this, apparently. But I have, I've heard the same thing. I've heard the, the, I have too. the same conspiracy. But I searched around the internet for several minutes, and I didn't find anything did that Yahoo said. Yahoo Earth? I did not. Mm-hmm. No, I only Figures. use Yahoo <laughs> to find my stuff. Um, I couldn't find anything. Earth. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't find anything that says that it's actually a no-fly zone. Oh, okay. But I did find a site that explained why conspiracy theorists may say that it is because not a lot of flights or almost no flights enter this zone. Why would you? But there's reasons why. Obviously, weather and climate conditions are poor. Yeah. Flying in those conditions is not suggested. I'm not even a pilot, and I know that. (laughs) Right. Okay? Constant snowstorms make visibility hard. I've driven in snow. Is that clouds or is that earth? Mm. Dive into it. <laughs> yeah. Pyramid. Oh, crap. <laughs> um, no infrastructure. Emergency landings are pretty tough when you're just going to land on a glacier. Yeah. Not easy, it right? It looks smooth, but it's not. No. Strong magnetic fields F up all your navigation equipment. Oh, wow. Like, it's yeah. all jacked up over there. You're at the freaking South Pole. Right? Magnets don't... The, the whole thing... The, you're Just a big magnet ice ball. Yeah, it's your compass is jacked up. Good gracious. So because of all this, the FAA requires additional gear and plans if you're going to fly over any of this stuff. Basically, you have to have two cold weather anti-exposure suits on board. Really? I'm pretty sure that most JetBlue flights don't have that. <laughs> yeah. If you're, You know what I mean? Which seats are closest <laughs> to your polar ice... Or, yeah, if I got an anti-exposure suit, uh, where's that at? I, I want to know where that's at. Um, for the cold weather location you'll be going to, you'll additionally require route-specific weather training. Because there are no flights over Antarctica, it is difficult to get route-specific training on routes that don't exist. Okay. Okay. Um, enhanced radios and other communication capabilities are also needed by aircraft so that they can I'm keep in they, touch. I'm surprised they even do that. They're just like, well, if you're stupid enough to go over it. I know. Good luck. Yeah, it's it's We're really gonna stupid. Do you any addition. Yeah, um, you're gonna. So basically, all of these things, and you got to keep gasoline from freezing. Oh yeah. And so it's a lot of things. So people just don't do it very often. I'm I'm sure people have done it, but it's just like it's not a shortcut. Yeah. There's. <laughs> I guess there. I guess there are some flights that go over the North Pole. Is that how it works? But none that go over Antarctica. Yeah. So, anyways. You can fly over it. You just got to have a lot of freaking stuff to do it. So I want to talk about a couple of crazy operations. Like gigantic balls. Man, <laughs> friggin' nuts of steel. <laughs> polar nuts. Yeah. <laughs> you got polar nuts? 
Charles Hapgood will fly over anything at any time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You got a hap good job strap on, and yeah. you're gonna need it. That's how that plane says hap good is going wherever the hell it wants to go. Charles <laughs> <laughs> have good sending all. Charles <laughs> have good call in the base. I'll fly wherever this shit I want to fly. <laughs> Ow. I'm leaving the radio on. <laughs> yeah. I ain't even shut um, it off. Operation High Jump. This was in 1946 and 1947. Also, jump. jump. <laughs> Operation Windmill. 1947, 1948. These were United States Navy operations, with high jump being the largest. Sounds like some gymnast stuff going on. <laughs> yeah. Operation high jump, go. <laughs> Operation windmill, watch this. <laughs> spin, boys, spin. <laughs> Grab those rings and spread. <laughs> Y'all looking good. Y'all looking good. <laughs> Nazis haven't got a chance against us. <laughs> Trained in the windmill. <laughs> Show them the windmill, Charles. Show them. Show them. <laughs> he learned that back in Iowa on a farm. <laughs> show him, show him, <laughs> show him, show him the windmill. Um, these <laughs> these were United States Navy operations, with high jump being the largest ever group to go to Antarctica, consisting of forty seven hundred men, wow. thirteen ships, and thirty three aircraft. That's a lot. That's, That's a whole lot. army. I know. I know. The main purpose was to prepare for and practice techniques for cold weather warfare in polar conditions while being diplomatically far away from the Arctic and Russia. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it was primarily a military exercise with a number of other important objectives, such as establishing a research station, investigating further potential base sites, extending the sovereignty of the United States to an extensive region of the continent, and surveying the electromagnetic, geological, hydrographical, and other scientifically important aspects Sounds of the important. physical <laughs> environment. Operation Windmill was a follow-up, which was a much smaller exercise the following year, an important part of which was to obtain ground references for 70,000 aerial photographs taken during Operation High Jump the previous year. Helicopters were used extensively, and that's why it was called Operation Windmill. <laughs> that's know. dumb. They weren't actually guys doing windmills out there. <laughs> It's too bad. That's really too, too bad. bad. <laughs> Conspiracy theorists believe Operation High Jump was actually the U.S. attacking the secret Nazi base. That's, yeah. Cam talked about earlier. Also, in August, Cam talked about this too. In August and September of 1958, three nuclear explosions were I didn't detonated. know about that. I didn't either. By the United States as part of Operation Argus over South Atlantic between 22. Should be Operation Ham, good. <laughs> And 3,500 north of Antarctica to the southwest of South Africa. Gotcha. 2,500 to one. I'm on the side of the plane ranch. Earth Got it. Pizza. I know exactly um, where you're talking. These were high altitude bursts, and as might be expected at the time, the height of the Cold War were shrouded in secrecy. We don't just go putting it on the front page. <laughs> Right? Well, well, nowadays. Yeah. Nowadays. Though they were reported soon afterwards in 1961. Some of these nuclear explosions were the U.S. actually finishing off the bases. <laughs> I like that. They so some say the nuclear explosions were the U.S. finally finishing off the bases in the Antarctic. So they went in on Operation High Jump. They beat the poo out of the Nazis. A few years later, they came back with that. Really, uh, would be a scary place to have a base because it's like we need to nuke us because they're not going to no nobody civilian cares. problem. Yeah, nobody cares. So anyways, Kill a couple spiders. Yeah, and some. Transparent fish. That's all. Not a big deal. <laughs> no one cares. So that's that's freaking how weird Antarctica is. It's pretty fascinating, right? That all that is going on down there right now. Pretty weird. <laughs> pretty weird if you ask me. All of it at once. Yeah. So go check so, out Google Earth. Seriously. You know, see what they got going on. Send us some pictures if you yeah. find it. Yeah. Screenshot. I want to see them all over the Facebook. I, I think I'm gonna go do that. Yeah. You should do a whole post. Uh, post. On you should do a whole post with all those stuff crazy with pictures. The weird. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. that's it, guys. Um, we do have a going gear we want to talk about real quick, like, because they, man, they always have such cool stuff. They really do. The first item in the box is the Best Tech Knives Reticulation. This is a two hundred and twenty-one dollar knife. You got to get a loan to buy that bad boy. Where to it go? It's right there in your hand. In it. Yeah. You got it in your pocket. No, I don't. Is it not there? Oh, well, it doesn't matter. It's a it's a cool knife from Best Tech Knives. It's freaking invisible. And then, <laughs> good luck finding it. It's like the fish on Antarctica. A couple fingers somehow. Um, somehow and then, we got the Kubi knife, the Thalia. This is uh, it's a Kubi little guy. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That's pretty neat looking. It does look really cool. Mm -hmm. Look at that knife. Then we have the Next Torch Glow Tube. Hmm. All right. 
That's cool. Yeah. Never seen something like that, huh? I haven't either. It's pretty stick cool. it on your back. <laughs> stick it on your hat. Stick it on you. Stick <laughs> on you. Just stick it on you. Stick it on you. And then we got the Uberlieben Zunden Fetty. This is a feral rod from hell. <laughs> Throws the sparks of hell into your fire. <laughs> We should make our own <laughs> freaking really barrel should. rod. Then we got the Uber Leaving original Kuksa. It's a freaking cup. Look at that. You don't need to hold cup carved out of the Nordic northern trees of the it feels like gods. one of those bowling balls when you're like, who's got this big of fingers? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who can fit their fingers in that hole? Those are some of those bowling balls. I'm like, geez. I know, huh? Freaking Sasquatch bowling in here? <laughs> yeah, it's like, who got knuckles like that? <laughs> Gosh, gigantic fingers. You should be a wrestler or something. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something. Anyways, that's it, guys. Thank you so much. Love yeah. you all. Watch out for that Antarctica. Yeah, Antarctica. If your weird. pilot says he's flying over it, check for those suits. That's mm-hmm. a scary place. It really is. Thanks, guys. Stay survived.